بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس وی آر ہیئر ٹو ڈسکس دا ایکس آر ڈی ٹیکنیکس ان ایم ایس کیمسٹری سیکنڈ سیمسٹر دس از دا لیکچر نمبر ون آف یور کورس کوڈ کیم فائیو ون تھری فور This is the syllabus of our course which is being discussed in this second semester. Course title is X-ray diffraction techniques. Code which is course code CAM 5134. This subject is of 3 credit hours. in second semester what is our course objective our course objectives are students should be able to understand about the x-ray diffraction and single crystal x-ray diffraction techniques what is the purpose the purpose of these techniques the determination of molecular and electronic structure of inorganic compounds and metal complexes with the help of different diffraction techniques actually the scientists had a uh, problems about the structure which is the internal structure of the solids actually inorganic compounds are mostly solids which may be uh, crystalline in nature the scientists were confused to understand about the internal structure of compounds course contents includes x-ray diffraction which is commonly pronounced as XRD powder x-ray diffraction single crystal x-ray diffraction need for single crystal x-ray XRD we will discuss inshallah about the need for single crystal xrd or powder crystal xrd comparison between single crystal x-ray analysis and other methods we will also discuss principles of single crystal x-ray diffraction interpretation of data electron density maps in this lecture and this chapter we will also discuss about the working of diffractors how diffractors work data processing the data which is obtained by the diffractors or xrd simons molecular analytical research tool which is smart advantages and disadvantages of x-rays will also be discussed here powder diffraction and single crystal x-ray diffraction comparison will also be discussed x-rays can be used but neutron and electron can also be used for the diffraction actually diffractions can be done by x-rays neutrons or electrons and we will also discuss neutron diffraction and electron dif- diffraction also x-ray fluorescence spectroscopy we will discuss about the theory history nature of analyte types of spectrometer used for x-ray fluorescence spectrometry 
ई डी एक्स आर एफ डब्ल्यू डी एक्स आर एफ बेसिक डिजाइन ऑफ एक्स आर एफ स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर दीज आर द टाइप्स ऑफ एक्चुअली एक्स रे फ्लोरिसंस स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी एक्स आर एफ स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर सोर्स इज यूज फॉर एक्स रेज एंड सैम्पल्स सैम्पल्स मे बी इन सॉलिड लिक्विड्स गैसेज which types of samples can be under uh, uh, examination or etc detectors and analyzers multi channel analyzer sample holder or cup will also be discussed actually these it is the instrumentation of fluorescence spectroscopy for x rays qualitative and quantitative analysis in ed xrf and wd xrf will also be discussed these are the recommended books from which you should search your topics of interest in your study actually x rays have greater penetrating power and because of their penetrating power physicists have got interest to study the internal structure of solids physicists have solids as amorphous and crystalline x r d is applicable for crystalline solids which contain greater degree of crystallinity higher degree of arrangement it is not applicable for amorphous it should be kept in mind <coughs> here is the chemical analysis for the compounds we are doing actually for chemical analysis a scientist first of all do the qualitative analysis in the qualitative analysis scientists actually measure or identify the constituents of a chemical compound and after qualitative analysis they do quantitative analysis for quantitative analysis the scientist the basic purpose of the scientist is to determine the amount or quantity of the constituents of a compound for quantitative analysis there are a number of techniques used but for this we have certain techniques just like spectrometry xrd or xrf spectroscopy spectroscopy is the interaction of electromagnetic radiations with matter dr m a kashmiri said interaction of matter with light actually when electromagnetic radiation is focused on a matter then electromagnetic radiation undergoes in a certain processes just like absorption scattering transmission reflection etc but our main focus point for the quantitative analysis is absorption of light by the sample of matter at which it is focused or irradiated in spectroscopy this relationship of light and matter is taken under discussion according to beer lambert law the light absorbed by matter is actually directly proportional to the substance amount 
or concentration of amount and path length of the sample by measuring absorption of light we can determine the amount of a sample so inshallah we will also detail further discussed in detail the light absorbed by a sample when it is irradiated is actually absorbed by sample by the these electronic uh, transitions which is on screen you are looking when the light is focused on the matter the electrons present in lower or ground states absorbs that light and jumps into the higher energy states which is the characteristic of every substance which is different from each other calorimetry calorimetry this technique in which a sample absorbs visible light is one example of a spectroscopic method of analysis at the end of the 19th century spectroscopy was limited to the absorption emission and scattering of light actually the electromagnetic radiation includes eight regions which are ultraviolet visible infrared x rays microwaves radio waves gamma rays cosmic rays etc in the early ages ultraviolet visible and infrared electromagnetic radiations were used but later x rays microwaves and radio waves are taken in under discussion to determine the interaction between these highly energetic electromagnetic radiations and matter behind, behind the electromagnetic radiation and uh, matter interaction there is also electron and ionic interaction with introduction of x rays x rays were discovered in 1895 by the german physicist ronchen and were so named because their nature was unknown at that time on the other hand they were much more penetrating than light and could easily pass through the human body with quite thick pieces of metal and other opaque objects opaque objects stands for those from which ordinary light cannot pass for example a human body or something other Uh, just like a uh, cell phone by with, uh, when they are irradiated with ordinary light and ordinary light, light cannot pass through human body and other solids but x rays have more penetrating power and they are highly energetic because of this they can pass easily through the opaque objects by placing a source of x rays on one side of the object and photographic film on the other a shadow picture or radiograph it can be obtained actually this is the mechanism by which you can pass the x rays through any object by placing the object between the source of x rays and the detector or photographic film for at which you can get radiograph here is uh, a human hand picture 
uh, first half uh, is focused or irradiated by the X-rays which is appearing l uh, light blue in color and the right side which is normal hand fingers and it is irradiated with ordinary light and uh, look ordinary light cannot pass through our body but X-rays pass and they form a radiogram this is the wavelength wavelengths have two major uh, parts actually one is upper side of the axis and one at the lower side of the axis upper side is known as crest and lower sides are known as trough and amplitude is the distance from axis to the uh, highest point at uh, either crest or trough in one wavelength there is one crest and one trough x-ray crystallography x-ray crystallography is a technique in crystallography in which the pattern produced by the diffraction of x-rays through the closely spaced lattice of atoms in a crystal is recorded and then analyzed to reveal the nature of that lattice actually in x-ray crystallography a sample or crystal lattice is irradiated with the x-rays which when x-rays hit at the crystals uh, they show the diffraction pattern and this diffraction pattern is observed by the detector and they produce their the constructive or destructive interference if there occurs uh, constructive interference they uh, we can get a crystallographic pattern or diffraction pattern if there occurs uh, destructive interference we cannot get diffraction pattern and further detail about the structure which is and this is x-ray pattern this is single crystal x-ray diffraction laboratory and the instrument used for x-ray diffraction which is highly protective Crystallography is actually the study of geometry and symmetry of crystal. Geometry includes the study of angles or edges or corners. And symmetry includes axes, plane, etc. Each set of these planes consists of a large number of planes parallel to each other and separated by fixed distance you should keep in mind that the atoms arranged in a particular arrangement form one plane you can also say about the they form a layer of atom and when we place the these parallel layers or planes in a fixed distance that distance is known as D spacing between the parallel layers or planes of atoms. Interplanar distance are the or of the atomic dimensions can also be determined by this crystallography. This led Max von Leo to suggest that a crystal should act as three-dimensional diffraction gratings or grooves for x-rays you should keep in mind that the gratings or diffraction gratings can act as a prism what is the function of prism when a white light is passed through the prism prism separates or convert the ordinary light into their components which may be seven look at the diffraction and grating 
actually the diffraction grating have a large number of grooves and they are very closely spaced when x rays are focused on the diffraction grating they are separated from each other or actually prism and grating act as monochromator they can you be, they can be used to get monochromatic light which have same wavelength diffraction grating is an optical component whose effect is similar to a prism prism and grating they supply white light into their component colors x-ray diffraction the this is the only method to directly determine the structures of crystalline molecules actually x-rays are highly penetrating they can pass through the internal internal structure and we can get the shadow of the structures on cardiogram x-ray beam strikes on crystalline material diffracted rays spread in various diffraction in this technique from the intensity and angle of diffracted beams are reflections of beams three dimensional electron density of molecules can be obtained and this is present in the crystal and by obtaining the data from the x-ray diffracted beams we can construct a three dimensional uh, structure it is the powerful technique which was employed to determine the long standing structural problems such as structures of benzene insulin enzymes and viruses the structure of benzene remain in under un consideration for a very long period and ultimately it was done by the x-ray diffraction technique insulin and enzymes structure which may be proteins and they have very complex structure and it was determined by the x-ray diffraction and just like what here is the mechanism of x-ray diffraction technique in the center which is appearing light blue is sample when uh, x-rays are incident on the sample the x-rays may be scattered from the sample and transmitted from the sample we can uh, get information from the transmission and scattered beam there uh, uh, is the x-ray detector which detect the x-rays coming from the sample which may be scattered or transmitted actually the scattered and transmitted beam by passing from the sample undergo constructive or destructive interference if the scattered and transmit transmitted beam tra occurs is a uh, constructive interference they produce uh, the x-ray diffraction pattern and we can get about the in uh, information about the structure of the sample and if there occur uh, uh, destructive interference between scattered and transmitted beam there cannot we cannot get uh, the x-ray diffraction pattern there are the types of x-rays x-ray absorption x-ray diffraction or x-ray fluorescence what is the definition of x-ray diffraction technique the atomic planes of a crystal cause an incident beam of x-rays to interfere with one another as they leave the crystal as we have we are I've already discussed that uh, when these x-ray beams pass through the sample uh, the they may be uh, transmit 
transmitted or diffracted. If the diffracted and transmitted beams form constructive interference, uh, we can get the information about atomic planes. The X-ray diffraction pattern of a pure substance is therefore like a fingerprint of the substance. Just like human beings, we have a thumb, thumb impression and our thumb impression is our fingerprint or we have complete information about ourselves, our identity. As we have the identity, same every substance have fingerprint which can be obtained by X-ray diffraction pattern which is actually their internal structure. It is based on the scattering of X-rays by crystals. Different radiation source of neutron or electron can also be used in diffraction experiments. The physical basis for the diffraction of electron and neutron beams is same as that for the diffraction of X-rays. The only difference being is the mechanism of scattering. X-rays, electrons and neutrons have same diffraction pattern, same basis, but there is the mechanism which is different. These are the recommended books by which we, you can get your topics of interest.